But you guys got another video here for you. VMware Workstation Pro is now free for personal use. I get this question quite a bit in the comments saying what uh, software do I use and where can I get it? Is it paid? It used to be paid software, but now they have released it to the general public for personal use. If you are a commercial uh, user, then obviously you would need to pay. But for free home users, you can actually use this for free and you can use the download link to download it and install it on your system. You can even download it from a third party site like TechSpot, where you can download it from here, which gives you a quicker download link and you don't have to sign up. But either way, you'll be able to get the software and install it on your computer and use it. So let me show you how this works and now you can set it up so I can kill two birds with one stone and basically uh, show you what VMware Workstation is. It's basically software which allows you to install virtual machines, whether it'll be uh, Linux, Windows, whatever you want to do, you can install it onto the software and it will run like a normal working operating system, but it's an actual virtual uh, machine. So you can see I've already got a computer here that I'm running. And I'm going to install the VMware Workstation Pro on this computer here. So I'm just going to go through here and set this off. And once this is done, we'll be able to then put an operating system on here. And I'll show you quickly how to do that as well. So you get a rough idea on how to do it. So I'm just going to remove these checks here. Leave the uh, check product updates on startup. If you want to do that, you can do. If you don't, you can take that check mark out. And from here, we can leave this as is and click next and then install. And this will install the software. It's not a large file to install, so it shouldn't take too long. And once this is done, uh, you should be able to then start using the software. This is very powerful software. I've been using VMware Workstation for many, many years, and uh, I find it much more easier and better for controlling your virtual machines rather than, say, VirtualBox and other software like a uh, hypervisor, which is built into Windows. I prefer using something like VMware Workstation. So let's go ahead and click finish here. And I'm going to open up the software. And I'll quickly show you how we can set this up. So what I'll do here, we have the actual shortcut here. Let me double click on this. Now, another way to run these uh, installations is have a secondary drive where you can store all your virtual machines. That's what I generally do here, but I'm on a new PC here, so I'll have to uh, basically uh, show you uh, how to do it on this system here on OneDrive. So what we're going to do here is uh, quickly check for software updates to make sure that it's fully updated. And you can do this manually, or you can leave it set to man uh, automatic, and it will do it automatically if you want to. So once this is done, it says there's no available updates, so we can now close this off. So now you're ready to create your first new virtual machine. So you can either go up to file and go to new virtual machine, or you can use the buttons right in front of you where it says uh, create a new virtual machine or open a virtual machine or connect to a remote server. So whatever it is you're trying to do here. So we're going to create a new virtual machine. You've got custom for the more advanced users, but if you're just a beginner, you can use the typical recommended and go next. Choose your ISO file that you want to use. So let's go ahead and download a Windows 11 ISO file here. So we're just going to go ahead and download one of these. This could also be Linux or any other type of operating system that you want to try out before you go ahead and commit to it and install it on your main system. So if you're using Linux and you want to still keep one foot in Windows, you could use a virtual machine to basically uh, test stuff on Windows in a virtual environment rather than having a dual boot and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and get this downloaded. And once this is done, we can now select our ISO file. So let's go to our download section right here and select our Windows 11 ISO file and click open. And now we can click on next and move on to the next stage. From here, this is where it's going to locate. You can give it a name and it's going to go into this location right here. So we've only got one drive here, so we're just going to leave that as is but if you've got a secondary drive you can browse and choose that now we need to give it an encryption here so give it a key and name and all we need to do here is give it the amount of disk space that we want so let's go ahead and give this say 100 
And we've got the radio button in the store virtual disk as a single file. That's perfectly fine. And again, we can now customize our hardware settings here. This is where you can customize your settings to whatever you like. So if you want to give it a bit more memory, you can do here, depending on how much memory you've got on your system. You can give it a few more uh, cores and a few more threads there if you wanted to. And we can now click finish. And it's now going to start to create a disk for our operating system. So we're just going to let that go ahead and do that. And once this part is done, we will then be able to turn on the virtual machine as it was a real computer and just power it on and it will then start to boot to that ISO file and start to install onto our virtual disk that we've just created. So we'll just let this do its thing and we can then, you can see now it's starting to encrypt the virtual machine and it's then going to start to allow us to install it. Now again, if you've got an old computer and you're thinking about uh, going over to Linux, then installing Linux onto this virtual machine might be a good idea to practice and get a used to or feel for Linux before you actually commit to installing it onto your main system. You can go through the installation process on here and have a play around with it to see whether you actually like this Linux distro or not. If you don't, then you can always delete it and install another one or install another one right alongside it. You can install many different operating systems alongside each other. So if you want to try different operating systems out, you can do. So let's go ahead and let's now download the software update for this. It wants to just quickly do that. So let me go ahead and let that go through. And then we can restart the virtual machine again because it wants to download an update. Another question I see someone ask inside uh, the comments was if I've got an old system and I install Linux on it and I put a virtual machine on there and install Windows into that virtual machine, would I be able to then play games on my virtual machine as a Windows system? You can play some light games, but you're not going to be able to do full-blown AAA listed games like this. It's not going to work for you because you are basically using this as a virtual environment. It's not going to replace a computer as such for like a full-on uh, gaming system. It's not going to be able to do that. Uh, certainly not this setup the way you've got it right here. So what we're going to do here now is go through the installation process as you would a normal operating system. So you just agree to all the terms here and go ahead. And we don't have a key here, so we're going to continue. And you can see it's starting to install Windows basically on Windows. We have an operating system down below, which is our main system. And if I mess this up, it's not going to break my operating system because you're actually installing this on a virtual machine. So it's not going to break it. So what I'd advise you to do is if you want to test out some Linux distros, if you're thinking about going over to Linux, if you've got an old computer that's not compatible or uh, been able to run Windows 11 uh, 24H2 or any version of Windows 11 because of the system requirements, then you can go and choose your favorite Linux distro, create a, an installation on a virtual machine and basically test it out and use it to see whether you like it. If you don't, then try another one. And that's basically how you can go about doing it. And you can see here we have got Windows installed on a virtual machine here. And it, you can see it's Windows inside Windows here. It's in its own little container. And you can do this for a lot of operating systems and test them out and have a play around with them and see whether you like uh, the operating system or not. I use these for tutorials, of course, so I'm not messing around with my own PC all the time. If I'm doing fix-it videos or I'm doing, uh, you know, say debloat videos, I will debloat the virtual machine and show you that way rather than debloating a real computer, which might mess up my system. I need a fully functional working system at all times and I don't need to be messing around with that on a daily basis. So that's why I use virtual machines. Anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to my YouTube members. I really appreciate the support and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.